What's up guys? So I'm about to head over to San Jose. Um, gonna check out the Vietnamese Museum. I've heard about it uh, for a while now. I think it started opening in 2007, but I've never had a chance to check it out. So I'm pretty excited to see uh, what kind of historical uh, things I'll be able to find. Um, from what I've read from the description on their website, it looks like they're gonna kind of showcase a lot of the uh, Vietnamese boat people experience. So um, yeah, so let's uh, head over to San Jose and uh, see what it's all about. We're here. So I arrived at History Park, which is actually surprisingly close to another place that I come to quite often. It's the Japanese Friendship Garden. Uh, so it's located in San Jose. And when I first came here, I was actually surprised. I, I looked up on my phone and I realized it's, uh, it's actually like a history cultural campus. And it's got multiple little um, museums that kind of tells uh, sort of the narrative of how San Jose became such a very diverse community. And here I was kind of fascinated about some of the descriptions and I've been kind of just taking it all in and reading about little snippets of San Jose and some of the other things that were uh, quite interesting to learn about. Um, so on my way here I noticed this, I think it's a stray cat, I don't know, but it was very derpy. Its eyes are cross-eyed and uh, it's very playful. Um, a little bit too playful because it's just start. Oh. It's just start nipping me and clawing me, but nonetheless, you know, it was cute. So as I continue to venture forward towards the museum, I was greeted by these pillar that kind of inspired by bamboo, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, and then when I first saw the house, the first thing that popped in my head was, whoa, that house just looks like that house from Pixar's Up. It's got like that Victorian looking shape. So here is the welcome sign, which I thought was pretty neat. So this boat is actually what got me very interested in checking this place out when I was Googling the Vietnamese Museum. That was one of the highlights of the, of the vicinity was this boat. And it reminds me of so much of the boat that my parents described. The thing you'll notice when you arrive to the museum is that there's actually quite a lot of memorials that are dedicated to the Vietnamese, uh, South Vietnamese army who dedicated their lives uh, during the war. Um, and this one in particular, I think highlights some of the seven soldiers that gave up their lives during the fall of Saigon, which I thought was pretty interesting. So in the front, you'll notice a description of the museum's history and it was actually founded by IRCC, which is the Immigrant Resettlement Cultural Center, which was established in San Jose in 1976. So prior to coming here, I was checking out the website to kind of get a little bit more uh, depth about what they really are. And it was actually founded by Am Vu Van Lop, who is the executive director. And the IRCC, they're known for providing a lot of, um, you know, sort of like volunteer services to a lot of the Vietnamese American refugees around during the uh, mid 70s all the way through maybe even 2000s. Um, so they've been around for such a long time and it's such a stronghold of the community here in San Jose, California. So I was just, you know, very blown away by the, the level of um, just camaraderie and uh, the community here in San Jose and how much they really trying to preserve their uh, cultural here as well. So upon arrival, I was a little bit disappointed that the second floor was closed, but I mean, I guess it makes sense. I think COVID kind of restricted uh, more foot traffic in a, such a small space. But um, when you come in here, the thing that you'll notice is that there is a lot of sort of like military uh, paraphernalia. One of the things I really enjoy about this museum is just the display of artwork here. Like this one that captures the fishing culture. And then this one is, I would imagine it's the Vietnamese boat people journey. And it's just so much intensity in this photo or this painting. Um, I wish there are prints that were sold here because I would easily just buy one and support them. So this one kind of captures the Vietnamese boat people experience. And then this one, I believe it's in San Jose. I just love the, the different colors used here. I mean, you can't help but feel some type of way when you see a collages of all these different emotions of the Vietnamese American experiences.
And of course, if there's ever a guest book, I always have to put my name on it. <laughs> So as I continue to tour around the museum, um, I've been just kind of looking at all the different display of uh, the uniform that was worn by the South Vietnam. Um, I'm surprised, I'm kind of curious where they got these mannequins from. And then, oh, I couldn't help but like enjoy looking at some of these <laughs> G.I. Joe looking type uh, action figures of Vietnamese soldiers, which I thought was pretty cool just to see an Asian face. Um, as a toy, which you don't really see a lot, but you know, I thought that was pretty cool. And then here are some badges and patches, and then different displays of boots worn. Now this part right here is actually one of my favorite too. It kind of shows all the different documentations and photos of, um, Oh man, I mean, I just wish I could read this in Vietnamese so I can fully understand the depth of what I'm looking at. But I mean, these just reminds me of our family's old documentations when we arrived at Galang refugee camp. So this right here is probably one of the most statement piece here at the museum. Um, I believe this is a concentration camp for uh, South Vietnamese prisoners in 1975. And I just, thought it was such a powerful piece to see little snippets of different prisoner cells and how they're living and, and just really how confined uh, this place was. So now I'm looking at this book. Um, it's called The Vietnam War, The Chronology of War. And um, one of the things I've noticed is that a lot of the descriptions, the captions, the photo that's being uh, displayed here in this book comes from the American military perspective, so to speak. And I mean, of course, I'm not going to dedicate this video about, you know, my own point of view, but um, it's just interesting to see that. And I think one of the things I would like to see is, is more literature written by Vietnamese experiences. And so come into conclusion of the interior part of the museum, I spent a good two minutes just staring at these goldfishes mindlessly swimming as a way to just kind of digest what I've seen today. But of course there's actually more. So when you step right behind the museum, you'll notice a huge exhibitions of different photos of different time of pretty much the Vietnamese American experiences, you know, like you'll see photos that are from uh, the Catholic community, or you see photos of little Saigon in different places in San Jose and uh, Santa Ana. Uh, you see photos of different activist groups lead by a lot of um, Vietnamese American. I mean, it's actually just quite inspiring to see how much of a footprint that, um, that we've left here for you know, many newer generations to come and learn about it too. And of course, this photo of this nurse or physician or whatever, uh, just checking the blood pressure of this elderly lady just kind of left a bit of an impression on myself too as well. Time, copy, 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 time. Today I am drinking counterculture. Alexa, what is thirty four times thirteen?
all done. This is kind of hot. We're gonna throw this into the compost. Okay. I usually try to go for the um, Japanese ice pour over coffee. Too much creamer. <laughs> there we go. Mmm, that's pretty good. So, some final thoughts about my solo date to the Vietnamese Museum. You know, I've, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit of emotional just seeing some of those artifacts and uh, some of the beautiful paintings of the Vietnamese boat people experience. Um, I'm sure some of you already know, but you know, my, my parents and like thousands of other Vietnamese Americans have immigrated to the States somewhere between like 1976 to, you know, all the way through the 90s um, via boat. And, you know, I've, I've always heard the story many times from my parents, right? And usually these opportunities to hear these stories kind of comes into waves, right? Sometimes it's at a family gathering. Uh, whether it's like for uh, that, right, Vietnamese New Year, whether it's at dinner time, whether it's just like me and my mom at a gardening, whatever the case might be, but sometimes I would hear bits and pieces of this story of how my parents escaped on a boat. They were on sea for about seven days and seven nights. They got over to Galang um, in Indonesia, and then a couple weeks later, that's when I was born. So I was born as a refugee baby. <laughs> so. Um, but just to have that visual um, representation from that museum, it really kind of helps to connect some of those missing pieces that sort of just ruminated in my head. So it, it really made everything very tactile and it's nice and it's actually quite awesome to see this museum in a community that's not very far away from me. So, you know, I'm anticipating of visiting more and maybe Hopefully just be able to check out the second floor. It looks like there's some pretty cool stuff up there too. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's just been a really awesome experience and I'm glad that I took this day to check it out. So, you know, even on that note, so this idea of refugee, right? Even in my head, the refugee experience, you would think that is something that's like 20, 30 years ago, right? So just because it's, it's my own personal experience, like the Vietnamese War was ended in 1975. But the refugee experience is very much alive today, which I'm sure you're very well aware of what's happening in Afghanistan, right? A couple weeks ago, uh, you know, the U.S. troops left. And so a lot of Afghanistan uh, folks were just so desperate trying to leave. And I'm sure you've seen so many photos on social media, but, you know, there's a strange parallel between the Vietnamese refugee and the Afghanistan refugee, right? You've seen photos of like in Vietnam in 1975 during the fall of Saigon, you've got the helicopter just kind of hovering right above the helipad and people were desperately clinging onto their loved ones trying to get them back onto the helicopter. Very, very synonymous to what's happening in Afghanistan. Same thing too. So just kind of seeing that was like a wake up call again, right? Sometimes um, you need to kind of be triggered by your own personal experience to empathize for other folks too. And that's that's kind of the overall feeling I had when I went to visit this museum. I just been thinking about how we are a, a nation of so many fluidities of coming in and out, in and out of our countries and um, how you know we also have a responsibility to help out those new refugee communities because we ourselves are refugees too. Um, I know that sounds kind of cliche, but it's just something that's been kind of, uh, kind of just marinated in my brain. So all in all, I'll leave a description. I'll put a link down below too, if you're very interested in supporting um, both the museum. And also I want to kind of put out some um, organizations too down below if you're interested in helping out some of the new uh, refugees resettling into the States, specifically from Afghanistan communities. So. Um, feel free to check it out. Um, I'm sure they can definitely use your help. That's that's all I want to say. Today was a beautiful Sunday. It was really hot down in the South Bay. Uh, and by hot, it's like Bay Area hot. So it's like in the 80s. Um, so we're starting to get some pretty late summer coming through in September. So uh, remember to stay hydrated and uh, stay cool. And always, you know, protect yourself and protect each other. And uh, yeah, happy nursing.
Thank you.